now coming into uh, the different steps of the automobile development as you see we have the concept we have the design and development that is the v model and finally the production stage so we will see these three stages individually from the coming slides first about the concept stage concept stage for an automobile uh, broadly has three three uh, different phases there may be many minute uh, phases in between but broadly it has three major phases one is starting with the market study which is inevitable for any product to produce and sell so basically the requirement of the market uh, the expectations from the market profitability of the product uh, the life of the product everything will be studied in this market study and this feedback will be pro provided to the styling engineers uh, automobile styling engineers are one of the best creators in the world because they have a lot of creativity to create a lot of concepts with proper logic it's not just like uh, drawings you make after and after you make you say okay this looks like this and looks like that they think that in their mind and based on that they make the concepts basically that is one of the reason they are uh, one of the most paid professionals in the world so they the concept the automobile styling engineers at first they do sketching uh, they do different modified modified versions of uh, the car uh, considering all the styling factors features in the external parts etc and they do it for all the views they do the same drawing for the front view side view rear view and they completely show what the actual how the actual car will look like after it is being produced after sketching they go for the clay modeling clay modeling is one specific uh, i mean one distinguished uh, process uh, in the product development followed in the automobile industry so this clay modeling will typically be done to show you how the car looks like it starts from the miniature clay model to the full size uh, car clay model and after the clay modeling is done they will paint the car with the actual paint they are going to uh, give for the final product and once that is done you can see that that will doesn't look like a, a clay model it looks like a real car basically so that is how the clay modeling is being done to visualize the feel of the product so this is what is done in the concept stage after that you have the design and validation stage so why this design and validation stage is basically required because uh, this phase uh, automobiles cannot be uh, sold just like that just you just produce a mug you sell in the market that is possible you produce a pillow sell in the market that is possible but you cannot produce an automobile and sell in the market just like that because it has many many restrictions you have to sell the, those products and many considerations you do because it involves a lot of uh, investment uh, in terms of money and time so basically four uh, things you need to consider uh, that is the reason for planning for the design and validation stage one is the regulations and the norms followed in a country where you are going to sell the car second is the safety features of the car third is endurance of the car and fourth is the comfort and performance of the car just giving a glance on each of these uh, elements first about the regulations and norms uh, most of you might know uh, there are some ncap regulations new car assessment program uh, regulations where the vehicle is tested by a private agency and star rating is been given Maybe recently you you might have seen some of our indian vehicles have achieved four star five star ratings in safety so those are all coming from the ncap ratings basically and ncap is being followed by different countries uh, you have ncap in usa you have in japan you have in china uh, you, you have in europe everywhere you have uh, ncap except some countries and india also planning for bharat ncap in future and similarly and these ncap stocks mainly about the safety i mean the crash related safety of the vehicle uh, but there are some norms which talks about the environment safety also uh, 
uh, which mainly the BS6 uh, we are following right now in India. Uh, how much carbon dioxide is allowed to be emitted from your vehicle and how to control that by tuning your engine by adding some uh, in between parts which which traps all your carbon dioxide so there are many things which are controlled by the government legally which the automobile manufacturer has to meet before selling his vehicle if he cannot if the manufacturer cannot meet this norms regulations he cannot sell the automobile so this is a very basic requirement before you sell so this is where most of the time is spent during the design and validation and second is the safety of course some of them are already taken care by the regulations and norms but some countries do not have extensive regulations as you may see uh, a typical example india uh, do not have as many regulations as usa and europe uh, it doesn't mean that the indian lives are uh, not as expensive as the others like not like that it depends on many political factors also the cost of the vehicle the cost of living in india per capita income of indians everything is been considered before these norms are been deployed so only if uh, the vehicle with the norms uh, available should be tested for uh, during the design and validation no even an automobile uh, passenger car is developed for india the same set of test which we do for the other markets the usa market or euro market that also should be done for the vehicle which is planned to be launched in india so even though there is no regulation proposed by the government still the automobile manufacturers test it because to uh, to have safety of customers in mind so safety uh, it has to be addressed in many ways safety issues comes from the frontal crash or from the side impact or from a roll over or it can be from fire also so there are many areas which should be touched upon by safety and should be addressed during the design and development phase and the third element is the endurance uh, of course uh, any product you buy should have some life you buy only if the product is durable uh, you buy a slipper you will think that that slipper will last for at least one uh, one year if it is not lasting for one year you say the quality is not good so this is how the endurance is being uh, judged subjectively by the customers but from the automotive manufacturers point of view this endurance has to be measured so how to measure uh, is basically what type of road the vehicle is going to be driven and how many times the vehicle is going to get some abusive loads like this people uh, traveling over the vehicle and how many times the vehicle is going to ride in a terrain road in the muddy road or in the hill station roads and how the luggages are being uh, going to be mounted in it and how the dynamics of the vehicle is going to uh, handle the road situation of a particular market so everything should be considered and it should be measured and it should be defined so that is how the warranty systems basically comes so if a manufacturer gives the product warranty as 2 years or 4 years he must have designed it for that endurance limit so endurance is the third element which which the design and validation mainly focuses and the fourth is the comfort and performance of course this is a luxurious item uh, most of the time so not a basic requirement but still the market is now emerging so the Uh, the audience uh, the customers expectation is now changing slowly from the mindset of basic need to the comfortable need so you should uh, think about the fuel economy the power of the engine you should think about the aerodynamic drag you should think about the nvh uh, how the noise is being perceived inside the vehicle you should think about the ergonomics so there are many other factors which which are involved so this is one element which should be considered during the design and validation phase so once you uh, do the design and validation these four are the this these four elements will basically cover uh, your need of the design and validation phase uh, just to give you an example of uh, the the previous v model uh, 
details, the details of the previous V model explanation. At first, we designed the automotive. So this is this comes from the requirements step in the design phase. So you decide how the automobile looks like, what are all the different systems involved. This will be a basic image. And then you design the systems. First, you design the automotive, uh, you conceptualize the automotive, then you conceptualize the system and design it. So you divide the whole car into different systems. You divide it into a structural member called the BAW, uh, powertrain as a different system, brake as different system, steering, your harness. You divide and many more systems are involved. So you divide them, divide the whole car into a different system. And then each system will be divided into different components. So here you see, I have taken the example of a BAW. So BAW cannot be just like that uh, designed. So each and every part detailed design should be required. So this is what we call as the component design. So how the cross section of uh, each pillar and each structural member of BAW should look like, what are all the controlling parameters? For example, these parts are basically designed using the force displacement requirement. And how the door hinge is being designed and how the hub of the tire is being designed. So like this, each and every part of uh, the system itself should be designed in detail. And then uh, it comes for the validation step. So once the design is made, it comes for the validation. Uh, this validation uh, can be done either uh, virtually by using CAE, the FEA, you say, finite element analysis methods, or by the physical validation. Of course, physical validations are much costly. Uh, costlier compared to the digital validation. So digital validations are usually done in the uh, beginning stages of the, the, the design and development stage. And the final validation will be obviously done by the uh, physical step. So this is an overview of uh, the design and validation step. First, we saw the concept stage. Next, we saw the design and validation stage. So this design and validation stage overview is like this. You first set the target uh, for the whole vehicle and for the component level and system level. Then you design the preliminary prototype of the vehicle at first. You don't have to build the actual product you are imagining. You can build a similar product with the existing uh, material available and then test with the preliminary prototype. You will get some idea how it behaves, how the requirements are met. Then you go for the component design, then you go for the system design, finally integrate the product. Parallelly, you test each system and components and finally go for the production. So this, this is just an overview of what we just saw in detail in the previous pages. And finally, comes to the production stage. We started from concept stage, proceeded for the design and development stage, finally into the production stage. Production stage, of course, controlled by uh, the cost, time, and feasibility have to be confirmed because every design, every imagination cannot be made into a product. There are some uh, many limitations which have to be considered before designing and producing a product. So based on this cost, time, feasibility study, the manufacturing process of each part will be decided and the production simulations will be made. Similar to the testing, which we saw in the previous page, production simulations are also now being conducted. Of course, both physically and in, the, in using the FEA. And then the actual tools for the producing the part is being developed. So this is the production stage after which the vehicle will be rolled out for sales. But one thing which we need to consider is when the production stage starts from the feasibility study, the development cost will be basically low. So any design change, for example, you made a design proposal, after sometimes you want to change the design proposal because it doesn't meet the, let's say the component level requirement. So this have to be informed at this time itself to maintain the planned cost of the development. If you delay, for example, you design a part here and you find out it doesn't meet the requirement and you want to change the design at this step. 
the development cost increases from here to here so this is basically the unwanted cost you are going to spend because you do not highlight this design uh, change requirement at the beginning of the development or production stage so similarly your design change at each timing will directly impact your development cost so one thing we should keep in mind whatever you propose you plan it well and propose it at the beginning itself any late changes will cost you a lot of money during the development process finally uh, coming to the challenges of the automobile development uh, one by one we can see many many challenges but they can be grouped uh, into somewhere like six items so one is the market dynamics uh, market dynamics means the customer's mindset is changing rapidly day by day uh, two years ago a different type of headlamp was liked by customers but now you see the hyundai creta and hyundai venue etc the headlamp design itself the design concept itself is completely different but still people are liking it so the product which were planned with the two years previous headlamp shape if it has been planned for 10 years you cannot sell that product for the next 8 years because the customer's requirement has changed now so this rapidly changing customer needs have to be considered while making the development and planning for the product development second is trade off of course trade off is a very difficult thing to manage because i will say being a crash engineer i will say the product should crash but being a uh, durability engineer someone will say no the product should not crash because the strength will reduce technically speaking this is where the trade off happens to a broad extent you can say uh, uh, from the uh, uh, marketing point of view someone will say uh, this one uh, i need some specific feature in this car but the finance team will say no we don't have budget for that so that should be some compromise between these two so this kind of trade off issues happen everywhere throughout the automotive development phase and third is the cost control as i said in the previous page any design change you make it late will lead to unplanned cost and more than that any uh, misplan you make will also lead to uh, additional cost during the development so planning should be perfect when you do a product development in automotive specifically fourth is the new regulations uh, as you can see some uh, market some countries are imposing new regulations year on year uh, so if you are designing a product for some safety regulation this year it will not be applicable for the next 10 years maybe in, in the next 3 or 4 years there may be some new regulation there will be some update in the regulation Uh, the best example is bs6 uh, so vehicles which was uh, which were designed for bs4 3 years ago cannot sell now so we should have that forecast of what will be the future of the market regulations and fifth is legal movements uh, legal movements uh, the, are basically the law uh, laws and regulations proposed by the each country one good example is recently uh, the united kingdom prime president or prime minister i don't know he announced that from 2030 uh, only electric vehicles will be sold in in uk there will be no petrol or diesel variants so this is one kind of uh, law which is proposed by the market but if you see most of the automobile manufacturers big sales market is europe but now because of this announcement their profitability will fall drastically so this kind of planning also should be considered and finally the diversity so one product doesn't suit all you cannot produce just one one model of car in your company and sell for all the markets no you have to have some 10 different varieties of cars you want to sell and of course if you increase the number of varieties the complexity of development also increases so everything should be considered in mind when you uh, do the product development in automotive mainly so here comes the end of this session